For the preparation and consumption of tea, time does not exist. By the end of September, the men and women will forget about the rest of their tasks and work exclusively for the Azalai. Preparation of the caravan takes several weeks. By the middle of October, everything must be ready for the departure. My mother loves to cook. How I miss those dishes she used to prepare when I was living in Agadez. My aunt also cooks good, but not at all like my mother. When I have a wife, I want her to be just like my mother. The people of Ibrahim's caravan are ordering the hundreds of meters of rope needed to put everything in its place. <laughs> Making rope is one of the most important tasks carried out on the days prior to the departure. They must cut palm leaves, dry them, and then spin them energetically so that they remain strongly tight. At departure time, the camels carry a light load, but on the way back, it will be necessary to tie several tons of salt on the camels' backs. This is a task achieved mainly by women, since their hands are slimmer, and so they can do this job much better than men. There is little time left for departure. Very soon everything will be ready and I will walk along the desert with my father and the rest of men. When I was a child, my father gave me a newborn camel and told me that someday we would both walk with him in the caravan. That camel died two years ago. I've buried him right here near the market. Yesterday my father bought another adult camel for me. I have promised my father to participate in many caravans with this camel. Another essential job to be done is the preparation of the gerbas, the desert water bottles. It's not easy to get water along the route. Wells are often dry, and many kilometers have to be traveled without obtaining any kind of liquid. That's why it's imperative to carry good gerbas that allow people to be autonomous. You can live in the desert without food, but never without water. To make those gerbas, you must kill a goat, skin it, and dry the skin. Once dried, you put it in water, and it is handled until it loses the smell and gains softness. Afterwards, you sew it, you put the finishing touch to it, and finally, you blow inside to verify that there are no holes in it. The legislation on water ownership is very precise, and so fraud may be punished even with expulsion from the community. In this geography, the different elements related to water that is, the irrigation ditch, the garden, or the palm, may have different owners.
Ibrahim's caravan is ready to depart. When his father gives the order, this expedition will go towards the spurs of the air to meet with the huge dunes of Tenede. If everything goes all right, in three weeks they will reach the Bilma mines. The Tuaregs have never done anything but trading. And the caravan is the eternal symbol of a world that is fading away. The caravan seems to have always existed, and so it has. For centuries, the Tuaregs have had dealings with all kinds of merchandise, some of them harmless, and some others more questionable. The slave trade had been their main source of income for a long time, although they also worked with salt and precious metals. Agadez, Timbuktu, or Gao were the southern ports, their natural frontier towards the black kingdoms of the Sahel. Upon their arrival in those cities, every caravan should be inspected by the authorities, who will reserve a portion of the load for the king. Only after that will they be able to sell the rest of the merchandise. The attacks were frequent. The Tuareg themselves, who offered their help as protectors and acted instead as attackers if rejected, carried out most of the attacks. Paradoxically, during the colonialism, they lived the best moment of the commercial expeditions. The presence of French troops kept the bandits off the caravan's routes. During the second half of the 20th century, that immutable-looking desert suffered a fatal hit. The arrival of the truck made the camel become a second-class transportation system. Those times when the desert was inhabited by a web of hundreds of thousands of camels eternally crossing the sandy grounds have disappeared. The only routes left as reminders of the past are the Azalai of the salt mines from Taudeni to Timbuktu, that of the Nioro in Mauritania, and Agadez to Bilma. If young people like Hassan and Ibrahim do not prevent it, these will be the last salt caravans. Today is an important day for Hassan. Today, a knife will be given to him. The Tuareg's life is not strongly marked by rituals, but they have some symbolic acts that are important for integration of young people in the adult world. One of them is the gift of the knife and the sword, which all Tuareg men carry with them. The time when these weapons had a real practical value has passed. The last wars have been fought with modern rifles and mortars. Nevertheless, the knife and sword still keep their symbolic value. The blacksmith shows them other works that Hassan's father has ordered to be carried in the caravan. <laughs> and at last, they give him the knife. When he comes back with the caravan, they will give him the sword as well. 